Hello and welcome. This is Andrew and today we're going to be continuing our Photosphere project by working a little bit on our interface. And we're going to be doing a little bit of everything. We're going to be creating some canvas elements, a few animations, as well as some code to make it appear and disappear. So hopefully that sounds good to you. Let's go ahead and let's get started. And if you remember in the last video, we created an interface game object that we then have a canvas childed to it. And what we're going to be doing is creating four images for each of the icons or the thumbnails for each of our photospheres. So if we right click, go to UI, go to image. If we double click that image, we can get a better look at it and we'll rotate it. We need to make sure our canvas should be in not screen space. We want it to be in world space. And we're going to want to give it an event camera. So if we go to our camera rig, we'll give it our center eye. And we don't necessarily need this, but it just helps in optimizing. And then let's change the rec transform. So we're going to center it out first. We'll change our width to 1024 and our height to 256. Double click on that again. Looks pretty good. Let's minimize our camera rig. Go to our image. And we're going to have four of these since we have four photospheres. And we're going to need to move it over to the right. Well, let's try 20. Well, I'll we'll probably actually have to try a little, little bit more than that. Let's just do 75. And we'll duplicate that and then we'll put it in negative 75. So we should have a difference between 50 between the two of them. Duplicate this one again. Should be 225. Looks good. And then we'll duplicate our first one and we'll just give it a positive 225 value. And that looks pretty good. We're going to be setting the actual value of these images through our interface code in the next video. So we're going to just have them as white squares for now. But we will be adding a canvas group as well as an animator to our interface. So the first thing that we're going to do is click our canvas and we'll just add a canvas group. And what this is going to let us do is change the alpha of all of our childed UI objects at once. And then if we go to our interface, we're just going to be adding an animator. And I don't have any of the animation windows open right this second, so let's do that really quick. Go to animation. We need a the animation tab. Drag that down there. And we'll need the animator as well. And we'll leave that right there. So let's create a folder for our animations. And these are going to be pretty simple. They're just going to be for some basic fading, but we can also use them if we want to add any sort of vertical or horizontal motion when our interface comes into view. So within our scene, we have our interface selected and we don't have any current animation clips on it. So what we can do is we can click, click create. And since we created that animation folder, we'll click in there and we'll just call this a n underscore hide and it's automatically going to create a controller for us as well so if we look here in our animator we have a controller there and if we look in our folder we have our controller there as well and if we go to our animator window we'll already have the animation we've created set at its default state but we haven't done anything with it yet so let's add a simple fade animation so we'll go down to our timeline, we'll hit the record button, and we'll go to our canvas since that's gonna have our canvas group on it. And since we're gonna be hiding it, we want it to start at a alpha of one and then fade out. And one quick way of doing this is just changing the value to anything pretty much and then resetting it to one. So what that's gonna do is it's, it's automatically going to create a keyframe for us and then we can go to, let's say half a second here and we'll just change that value to zero. And then if we sort of scrub through here, we can see our animation it works pretty well. And then we have the hide. Let's create another one for showing. So let's create a new clip. We'll call this a n underscore show. And we'll basically be doing the opposite here. So we'll record again, but we're going to assume it's going to be at zero when it starts. So we can actually just set that to zero and then half a second in, we'll change it to one. There we go.
And now with our animations done, we can go to our animator tab and we'll have the clip for our hide and the clip for our show. But we need to add some parameters so we know to switch between these two animations. So if we hit the plus sign here, we're going to create a trigger and we'll just call it hide and then we'll create another which we'll just be calling show. And then we just need to create some transitions between these two animations. So we'll make a transition, make a transition. We'll select the, the arrow it's created. Uncheck exit time so we can animate as soon as possible. And we'll add the condition that the show trigger has been triggered. So we'll be transitioning from hide to show when we trigger the show trigger. A lot of triggers in there. And we'll basically be doing the same except for our conditions, we'll be setting it to hide, which it's already there. So let's double click those. They both look pretty good. Now let's go back into our scene view. We'll select our interface. And we're actually still recording, so let's make sure we deselect that. And if you notice when we created this canvas, since it's in VR, we need to obviously make it a world space canvas. But one of the problems with creating a world space canvas is that it may not always be in front of the player or the player may not be looking where the world space canvas is. So we're going to need to be able to create some code that aligns this canvas with wherever the player is looking when their finger touches the touchpad. So that's what we're going to do now. It's going to be pretty simple. There are some more advanced ways of doing this, but this is a, gives us pretty decent results with a lot less work. So let's go into our interface script so we can make those additions. Now the first thing that we're going to need to do is create a few variables. And we're going to need one for our camera, our animator, as well as a float so we can set the distance that we want our interface to be from our camera. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is adding a public variable for our distance. So it'll be a public float. We'll just be calling it m underscore distance. And we'll be initializing that to 3. And then we'll come down here. And we'll create a variable for our camera. We'll initialize it to null. And then we'll do the, basically the same thing for our animator. And then we want to set those two variables up in our await. So let's set our camera first. And we'll just be using camera main so we can get the main camera that's tagged. And then we'll be setting up our animator. And we'll just be using a simple get component for that since our interface and our animator are on the same game object. And if you remember in the last video, we've already set up our hide and our show based on the touch start and touch end. So if we scroll down here, we had our hide and our show that were both empty. And we're going to need to create one more function for our align with camera. So let's set that up now. Be a private void align with camera. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It's going to align the interface with our camera. So let's set up our show and our hide. And if you remember, we just created those triggers for the hiding as well as the showing of our interface. So when we call show, we want to trigger the show that we set up. So when we call the function show, we want to set the trigger for showing our interface. So we'll be using our animator. We'll say set trigger. And then we'll just be putting show. It's pretty simple. And then we'll be basically doing the same thing for hide. Hide. And that's all we need for those. And then align with camera. And the basic logic for this is we're just going to take the interface, we're going to set its parent to the camera, and then we're basically going to just alter its position in local space, and then we're going to unparent it. So then when the player looks around, the interface is not going to be following them around. So we'll be writing transform, set parent. We'll be using our main camera and getting its transform. So this is going to set our interface. So this is going to set our interface up with our main camera. We're going to change its local rotation. Because we'll just make this really simple and keep it to basically whatever the headset is. So it'll be quaternion.identity. 
and then we'll just change the local position and we'll just create a new vector 3 we'll change the X and the Y value to be 0 since it'll be we want to be in the center of the screen but then we want to use our M distance variable because we want to just alter it in Z space to tell it when we want it to be this far away from our player when they press the button and then once that's done we'll unparent it so it basically retains its position in world space and we can just do that by setting its parent to null. And one thing that we need to do is call this align with camera from somewhere. And we're going to be doing that using animation events. So let's go back into Unity so we can set that up. So now that we're back in Unity, let's make sure that our interface is selected. We'll make sure that our scrubbing head is right here at the very beginning. And we'll click this icon right here that says add event. And then it's going to give us this big unorganized list of function calls. Well, luckily for us, it's not that big, but it can get pretty long. So we have our on destroy next and all this stuff, but we're just going to be using align with camera. So the idea with this is, is once that animation starts based on the button press of the player, it's going to call that show function to set that trigger. And then once this animation starts to play, we're going to align the camera and then it's going to fade in. And I think we're all set, so let's save this and let's hit play. And while we're playing, if we select our interface and then we go to our animator, we could see that we're currently using the hide animation here and that our canvas itself, well, I think we're actually looping it at the moment. It should just be stuck at zero since we're hiding it. So let's go to our two animations really quick. I don't think I set the loop time off, which I didn't. So let's stop playing. We'll select both of those. Oh, we can't do multi-object. We'll disable the loop time. And before we try testing this again, there's a couple more things that we're gonna need to do. If we go to our canvas, I'd forgotten to change the scaling of it. Since the canvases for some reason have to be gigantic, to 0 0.005 all across the board. So it'll work a little bit better with the size of our player. And then if we go to our OVR camera rig, we'll notice that since we're using the center eye anchor, we wanna make sure that it's tagged main camera. But we also wanna check these other eye anchors to make sure they are not tagged main camera, like this one. So we'll untag that. And I think that's everything. Let's hit play again to make, well, hopefully we'll see if this works. And then we'll click into our game view just to make sure. And if we press space, we'll see that our interface has showed up. And then when we let go, it disappears. And then if we hold control and look over to any direction and hold space again, we'll notice that it appears in front of us. And then if we hold control and look around, it maintains its position in world space. And then we'll let go and it works pretty well. And that about is it for this video. In the next one, we'll be handling the icon images as well as the animations for the button themselves so when we're cycling through them they'll enlarge or we can change the transparency or something like that and i think that'll be the last video of this series if you have any problems feel free to leave them below and i'll see you in the next one but before i go i would like to do my patron shout outs for the month of march it took a little bit longer to get all the information this time around so hopefully late is better than never so let's get started i'd first like to thank Seven Ati. Pierre Franson, Adrian Soto, David Fufu, and as always, The Architect. I'd also like to thank Evan Buxton, Shane Nielsen, Mark Humble, Alan Yam, and Zach Ellis. But that's it for the shoutouts. I'd like to thank them all again and every one of my patrons for their support over the past few months as well, potentially over the past year or so that we've been doing this. So thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.